OpenAI just dropped a new model, O1, and I want to tell you about it. All right, so let me show you how it works. So if you head into ChatGPT and you go to your model selector, you can now select one of two models, O1 Preview and O1 Mini. O1 Preview is a little bit smarter, it's a little bit slower, and it has more knowledge of the world. So if you're asking it questions that require it to know things about what's going on, you should use O1 Preview. O1 Mini is faster, but it knows less about the world. It's just much better at like math and coding problems. Like it got an 800 on SAT math, but it's never read Shakespeare. If you have a really reasoning specific problem, it's better to use Mini. Let's see how this works. So if I give O1 a question like, prove that the square root of two is an irrational number using a proof by contradiction, then explain how this discovery impacted the development of mathematics in ancient Greece, you'll see something totally different. Instead of just blurting out an answer, it says thinking. So you can actually watch a summary of its thought process. So it'll start with presenting a proof and then observing even numbers and then revisiting ancient beliefs as it goes through the history. And then you also get the whole result. So you get the proof by contradiction and its impact on ancient Greek math. And this specific question, so, you know, proving that the square root of two is irrational is not something that GPT-4 necessarily would have gotten wrong, but it's a, it's a good way to show how O1 is different and why it shines. So the reason O1 works better is because of this thought process. It's called chain of thought. And chain of thought reasoning is something that's been around for a long time prior to even O1. It's something that people noticed from the original GPT models. If you ask them to think about their answer step by step, to basically think out loud, it would actually improve their accuracy and reduce hallucinations. This is because you can think of GPT models as sort of intuitively blurting out the answer to questions without thinking it through first, like they think by writing to you. And if you ask them to think out loud, they're going to get better at reasoning in the same way. If you do long division by hand on a piece of paper, you're going to have a better result than if you just do it in your head. The difference with O1 is that the model does chain of thought reasoning natively. So it's been trained by reinforcement learning to always do chain of thought whenever you ask it a question. And this is actually a totally new paradigm for AI performance. Previously, the only two ways to make a model better were add more data or train it with more compute. But if you notice when I ask O1 a question, it thinks for a certain amount of time. This one thought for seven seconds. And what OpenAI has found is that if you scale the amount of time the model uses to think, you also scale performance. And so they found a new way to create better performance, which is just spend more time thinking during inference when, when the AI is responding to a prompt. And this has a lot of interesting implications for users. So you could imagine a future when you ask ChatGPT a question, it doesn't respond immediately, especially for a difficult question. You might say, go spend a few hours on this or a few days and come back to it much later. This is really interesting for two reasons. One is it means that models like this in the future might be able to tackle much more difficult problems than they can today. But it also means that it might be a new and important skill for humans to learn how to do in the future. So I've been talking a lot about the idea that we that we might be moving from a knowledge economy where you're compensated on what you know to an allocation economy where you're compensated based on your ability to allocate intelligence. And being able to prompt models like O1 might be an interesting skill that's necessary in the allocation economy. You need to know when to turn to an expensive, long-running model like O1 and how to get the most out of it when you do. Because running O1 is a big bet. It might take minutes or hours or days to complete, and that's going to cost time and money. So you need to get good at knowing which bets to take and how to formulate a prompt that will be most likely to succeed. And it turns out that prompting O1 is a little bit different than prompting regular ChatGPT. For example, OpenAI has found that O1 is better with shorter prompts that get right to the point instead of prompts that have a lot of detail or have a lot of extraneous information, which is a lot different from 4.0, where you could just throw in as much context as you want and it wouldn't significantly degrade performance. With O1, you have to be a lot more choosy about the specific information that it needs so that its chain of thought stays on track. You should definitely use this model today. I'm really excited about it. There's about 10 to 20% of prompts that you're using day-to-day -day that require the level of reasoning that O1 can give you. And for that, it's, it's really cool in my early testing. But I think the real winners here are businesses that are going to be building with this stuff. Stuff. I think businesses are more likely to have these more complicated queries that might run for a long time that require significant reasoning. I know for us at Every, we have an internal incubation that saw a 20% improvement just for, from some simple use of O1. Overall, this is just a really, really exciting time. If you've found cool ways to use O1, let me know in the comments. I want to hear about it. My name is Dan Shipper. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Every, a daily newsletter about what comes next in tech. I'm a writer. I'm a programmer. I'm an entrepreneur. You should check us out at every.to.